chain. Every living thing needs energy to survive. Where do you get your energy from? From food, of course. What about plants? Do you think they eat food? That's right, they do. Today, we are going to learn more about something called the food chain. The food chain explains how everything is connected. Plants, animals, the sun, and you. True or false? Every living thing needs energy to survive. True. Let's start at the bottom of the food chain with producers. Producers are usually plants and other organisms that make their own food. This happens through a process called photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, plants use sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to make energy-rich food. They store this energy in their leaves, stems, and roots, which then becomes food for other animals. Without producers, there would be no energy available for the rest of the food chain. Fill in the blank. During blank, plants use sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to make energy-rich food. Photosynthesis. Next up are primary consumers. They are herbivores, which are animals or insects that eat plants. Animals like rabbits, deer, and caterpillars eat plants to get the nutrients and energy they need to survive. What are herbivores? Animals or insects that eat plants. Secondary consumers are animals that eat herbivores. These animals are usually carnivores, which means they are meat eaters. Foxes, snakes, and bird of prey are all secondary consumers. They get their energy by eating herbivores, which allows them to hunt, grow, and reproduce. Secondary consumers also help maintain a balance in their ecosystems by controlling herbivore populations. Which of the following creatures is a carnivore? A. Caterpillar. B. Deer, C, snake, D, rabbit. C, snake. Let's move to the top of the food chain to tertiary consumers. They are typically the largest and strongest predators, like lions, wolves, and eagles. Tertiary consumers eat other carnivores and sometimes herbivores too. Apex predators have no natural predators and help keep ecosystems healthy by preventing one species from becoming too dominant. Some of these predators even eat tertiary consumers, which makes them quaternary consumers. True or false? Tertiary consumers are not carnivores. False. Here's an important fact to remember. Every time an animal eats another, energy is passed along, but not all of the energy is transferred. That is why food chains are usually only a few levels, and why there are fewer top predators than plants or herbivores. What happens to a food chain when an animal dies? Decomposers, like bacteria, fungi, and earthworms, break down dead plants and animals into tiny pieces and return nutrients to the soil. This helps new plants to grow, which restarts the food chain and makes sure that ecosystems continue to function. Fill in the blank. Bacteria, fungi, and blank are examples of decomposers. Earthworms. Here's an interesting fact. There are times when food chains overlap. This more complex system is called a food web. Here, plants and animals are even more connected to each other. Like so. Food chains can be affected by a lot of factors, including changes in the environment, human activity, or the addition of a new species. If one part of the chain is disrupted, it impacts the other parts. So protecting all of the links of the food chain is super important and keeps the earth healthy and full of life. What is something you can do to help protect a food chain? Hope you had fun learning with us. Visit us at learnbright.org for thousands of free resources and turnkey solutions for teachers and homeschoolers.